But to earn that trust and to keep it is the real issue. Okay, I think I know the answer to this question, and you answered it in, in part in many of the things you said. Do you have a general philosophy that guides your life? And if so, and I'm sure you do, how has it sustained you through challenges or, or bad times? How does that philosophy sustain you? You know, when I was um, um, in college, I had an experience where I should have drowned. And I was at the Edisto River in Orangeburg, South Carolina. And I'll never forget, I was under the water for 28 minutes. Ooh. And I was going to the bottom of the water, of the river. I could feel the scratches and the bruises. And something just whispered, I can hear it as if I hear it now. And I could feel the same thing I felt then. Just raise your hand. And I just raised my hand just like a thumb. And I was at the bottom. And the next thing I knew, I was on the banks of the river. And the lifeguard said the only thing that saved me was he saw my fingertips and he just grabbed the hand and pulled me out of the water. Mm -hmm. So I've always believed that from that moment on that my life and my choices, it's an instinct that I have. It's a feeling that I have. You know, if no one had ever told, if the Torah or the Bible or the Quran never existed, in my heart, I know right from wrong, even in the choices I make. And sometimes like, St. Augustine said in his um, confessions, Lord, make me good, but not just yet. We as men don't always want to be good. We go work on somebody else and come back to me. Even in that, I always can never use the fact that I did not know, even with no child left behind. If I had thought about it long enough, with my writing about it in my column, I would have known that it was wrong, and that if it were ever found out, it would come back to bite me. And it's in those moments when I'm in the middle of a storm and in the middle of a controversy, when I want to blame somebody else, that, that spirit comes back to me and says, but wait a minute. And only then when I can look at my own self and the jihad that I spoke of, can I learn and grow and be a better person. The reason why people don't grow is because they find somebody else to blame for what is happening to them. I always go within myself and search myself to find out what is really the root cause of this. And that's why I always become a better person. I find it interesting that you said that even without these existence of these three great religions you mentioned, that you would have these same feelings. And I get the impression from what you said earlier that these feelings come from your parents who are devoutly religious people. No. No? It comes from the God force in all of us. Okay. No, it's much deeper than my parents. But you must have heard it from your parents. You know, as a child, it's hard to remember what you've heard from your parents. Something can be embedded in you that is there. I believe that the truth has a biological advantage. It doesn't need mm -hmm. the artifice of man to breathe. It lives and breathes freely on its own. I believe a child sucking at his mother's breast can pass truth along to that child. I think the same way truth is passed along to us by our Creator. And I think if you, if you try to keep the conscious pure, try to keep the conscious good, and try to do good, in, in that cleansed conscious, you can always find the truth that you search for. I don't think people have to search for it to find it. Let me ask you about race, and I know that earlier you said that you don't, you don't think of people